<laughs> okay. All right. We're going to start in again. We're trying to do this in 15 minute increments. So we were at 15 minutes on this shelf and now we're going to continue on. This is the Hats of the 20th Century Museum and more. And we're trying to look at older things, things that are older than the 20th century, just to get them out of the way. And then we'll start doing programs with actual hats. Okay, so we had talked about the Pazne. There we are. And other pieces of jewelry. Little bisque doll. Up here we had a little bisque Santa Claus. Or porcelain. I'm saying bisque, but it's probably porcelain. And um, so down here on this shelf that we'll head to, this was a wonderful find. An actual millinery card advertising the opening in October 7th of 1882. Isn't that nice? I love it. And that's the real deal. That's not a reproduction card. There's another one. Doesn't have the year on it, but it looked equally as old. And I got them the same place. Um, all right. I talked about Pazne glasses, which means pinch nose. So a fella's big nose might, <laughs> might be able to grab onto a guy's big nose. And they were held by that little ring or a little hole in the <clears throat> lens by a chain. All righty, so I've got to keep in your way. So the chain needed to be held somehow onto you. If it didn't go around your neck, there was such a thing as a, an ear hook that you could put behind your ear, and that would hold your glasses in just the right place. When they came off, they would just hang there by your neck. So that's one method, an ear hook. And here's another method that might have had a little longer chain, actually. Yes, it does. A little pin, a nice stick pin that could go into your blouse or your sweater or something to hold your glasses when you took them off or if they fell off. And back here we have another one, another way of doing it. Cute little card, all these little die-cut cards ahead. This is a retract retractable chain. There, I'll try to hold that up. Oops, not very easy. But, so you could retract them. They could stay on your, on your shirt quite closely, or you could pull them up and put them on your face. So that's probably the neatest one there with the retractable chain. Uh, spectacles that were called Pazne. All right, then a little bit further down here, I took most things off this shelf so they're easier to see. Here we have some other type of morning fans being black and circular and quite old and quite frail. We have two of those. And here's an ornament of black glass or something that would have come off. I think it actually did come off of an old hat. Very pretty. That type of thing, you know, where they had to decorate things. I don't really know the age of it. Here's some wonderful old tatted baby booties that we do know for a fact are, are turn of the century, aren't they something? Of course, a person can still tat, but these are quite, quite old. Okay, down below, we have some uh, dresser pieces. I think this thing here, if you can see that, is a great big uh, holder for hat pins. It's a cameo. A little dresser, I don't know, a little saucer. Here's a covered saucer. I don't really know what they are because I'm not really into dresser pieces. This part, the lid comes off and you can see that it's a hair receiver. When you combed your hair, you uh, kept the, when you brushed your hair, I should say, you pulled the hair out and you stuck it in there because you're going to need that hair later on to help poof up your hairdo next time. So you didn't throw hair away either. You kept it. Here's another part of that dresser set, matching little little items, and a few hat pins, which I could say, that's I have a few more, but I didn't go nuts collecting hat pins. And now I see that I might have been smarter if that would have been my goal, because my whole collection might have fit in a box instead of a building. Here's a beautiful, well, that's life, you know. You, get, you go down the path, you go down. Here's a beautiful old brooch. I thought the back was broken, but when I remembered by looking at it, it's not. It has a C clasp, so that's quite old. Possibly not older than 1900, but it was in the case here anyway. So, and here is a little booklet with a tintype. 
She's so mirror-like. Is it reflecting? It's okay. All right, isn't that wonderful? Have two of those. There's another one up on that top shelf. Very wonderful. Tin types, daguerreotypes. I don't know what types all these types are, but if you've been in an antique store, you've seen all these type of old pictures. Very interesting. We love them. I feel bad when I think those people are no longer here. Oh, here's a bonnet that came off of that shelf. I took it out so we didn't fight with it. There's an old an old gal wearing her bonnet. She doesn't look real happy about it, but I don't know if there was much to be happy about. Here we are. Black lining, probably homemade. It has a wonderful grab on your head when you put it on. Velvet. There's a velvet muff. A nice big puffy muff that would have been so warm. So wonderful. Here's on another, I forgot to show a bag of more crepe. Morning crepe. Different pieces and parts of things. I don't know how I got a hold of the fabric, but my friend who knows a lot about mourning explained to me what those are, and that they're kind of nice. <clears throat> Here's this wonderful little summer cape. This would kind of be the turn of the century, or, or a little older. And I loved the iridescent lining of all things. I mean, we didn't, we would have never thought they'd have stuff like that until you see they really did. Beautiful iridescent fabrics. Oh, and now that I've got it that far off, I could show you the back though while we're talking about her. This is the back. Isn't that pretty with the bows and the lace and the glass beads for trim? Just gorgeous. This wonderful uh, coat rack of, I would say, burl wood. I can't find anything on Googling or anything to tell me more about it. I just know that it's super unusual and to me, and I just love it. It's just marvelous. Down below, we have a piece of goofus glass, if anybody's familiar with that. A cheap carnival kind of glass that was given away. It's prizes, very inexpensive. Now it's a little more collectible, goofus glass. But anyway, burl wood coat rack. And we'll hang that back up. And, oh, let's see. Now we could do this. Here we have a, uh, an iron for fluting collars or cuffs or whatever you could stick in there. You got it hot. I think you could probably take that part off. I don't know if you did or not. But anyway, that part went on the stove. Maybe all of it went on the stove. You got it super hot, put your fabric in there, and then press down until you got what you wanted out of it. And I'm going to move it. It's called a fluter, and it's greatly improved. Whew. wonder what the other kind looked like. Here we got an old kerosene heater. And I haven't remembered until I looked at it yesterday how nice it is. I knew it looked nice. Uh, United States... South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, USA. And my goodness, it was never used. Here it is. The papers, the original packing over it. My goodness. Now what else could we take apart here? Kerosene. Nice, clean, burning kerosene in there. And what a wonderful deal. I mean, my gosh. Now we, we don't know how to heat our houses safely. We sure had to live on the, the edge back then. But anyway, that's just a wonderful little old heater. Okay, let's come around this corner, if you don't mind me busting you around. Here we are, hanging from my wonderful burl wood coat rack is this wonderful old coat. This is about the first old item I bought in the way of clothing. The gal in the little, little small town antique store was so thrilled to sell it. I was so thrilled to buy it. It's for a real big lady. And then on a greeting card, I found a, a lady of that style. I can tell from her hat. And wearing a similar kind of coat. Wish I hold her a little steadier. Anyway, this is kind of turn of the century. And let's see. Interesting things on here. More calling cards. This uh, long, thin one might have been a bookmarker. It's genuine. These are all originally... They're old, they're not reproductions. Nice little, little container. Oh my gosh. You know what, this is a mystery, <laughs> a mystery solved. 
because I knew I had more of that really old lace or trim. There it is for all my looking around. I found it by opening that up today. Oh my goodness. I didn't know I was going to be on a Oh, from the early to mid 1800s. Oh my goodness. That's where I found the other kind I put on the hat. So this was another little container that I'd gotten on that garage sale. Jeez, happy day I found it. Okay, we just have a cute little bowl here. This is a reproduction card, but the type of cute little cards that they sent. Little girl in a big cloth hat. Uh, oh, here's something wonderful. One of the first antiques we bought years and years back, and it's a doorbell. So this part went on the inside of your house. Here's where your door was without the chain. And then on the outside of your door, probably with a longer shaft, was the key. And so the, your guest ringing your door, knocking on the door, would twist the key on the outside. Isn't that marvelous? Patented in August of 93, so that'd be 1893. Russell and Irwin Manufacturing Company, New Britain, Connecticut of USA. I've loved that and I still do. Now the poor gals that used to iron, <laughs> really, they must have had great muscles. Oh goodness, you break. Put this heavy business on the stove to get as hot as possible. Put that down on top, clamp or shut, and you were ready to go to start ironing the miserable cottons that you had to iron back then. And I've ironed some of these miserable old clothes with a modern steam iron, and it's horrible. So I really have to take my hat off to these old gals that they had to go through. But they knew nothing better. So this is another method but it is worn out. These would have bit down into it to grab your iron when it was hot. You had several of these and not so many handles maybe. You know what, I think we're kind of coming to the end. We're only gonna do this side. Can you tell me how we're doing on minutes? 12. We're 12, all right, maybe we can do a couple other. Here we go, a rug beater. Isn't that wonderful? The before vacuum sweepers, or maybe in the beginning of vacuum sweepers, they were still taking their rugs out and hanging them on the line and then beating them to get the dirt and the dust out of them. It was a hard life. People were in good shape, I tell you. So if we come into the bathroom, one of the things I don't want to forget to show you is a wooden um, stocking stretcher. When you washed your stockings, you had to put them back on something so they didn't shrink. They end up the right size. This stocking stretcher was made by the Waterton Company, and it's size nine and a half. Isn't that marvelous? I love that kind of thing. On this side, I'll just pull it off the wall. We've got a nice old, and it's actually old, not a reproduction, of a, um, oh, goodness sake, now I've got to see it better. Howard Chandler Christie, 1891, artwork by his. Not original, it's a print, but somebody bought it back then, and then I bought it at an antique store. Here on the shelf, well, one wonderful thing is this beautiful color page from a Delineator magazine in 1903. Isn't that marvelous? Oh, that, was a, that was a gift, and I do love it. Here we have... Um, a chamber pot, as indelicate as that sounds. It was also called the slop jar, which is even more indelicate. Here's the lid. Down here, I can move our three graces so you can see it better. And um, this was what we had for indoor use in the days of when we had outhouses. And uh, <laughs> that's all you could do. It was better than going outside. And this is a smaller, more practical version that would slide under the bed. Our family called these thunder mugs, but, and it should have had a lid too, but the lids are often broken and missing. So on this wall here, I don't think thunder mug is a technical name. I think chamber pot is the real name. On this wall here, we have a lot of old things. Um, here's another original, I mean, it's original, it's not a, a I mean, it's an antique there. It's not an original. And it's by Harrison Fisher. And his writing is always 
hidden so well you can't see it but right there is his Harrison Fisher signature and over here we have the greatest moments of a girl's life these depictions of dating getting married all of these things that happen in life up to having a baby this was also done by Harrison Fisher this is a reproduction though I'm not going to try to kid you dollar 99 at a thrift store wonderful old pictures wonderful old frames these might be newer frames but they look very old and very nice this is an old picture too you know i think that might do it i think we're done so next time i promise we're going to look at some hats thank you very much